Hello friends. The fact that you're watching this video means you've probably seen my previous video wherein I have uh, uh, basically laid out my hypothesis that gold could go all the way up to 80,000 rupees for 10 grams and silver can go all the way up to rupees 1 lakh or 100,000 per kilogram by the end of 2025 or maybe even earlier. Now, a lot of my online family members have gone forward and said, Vijay, take this idea forward and help us as to where we should buy our gold and silver from at the purest possible grade and at the most um, uh, honest to God knockdown prices and how to get it checked, verified, certified and sleep with peace of mind after we have bought this bullion. In this video, I will also touch upon whether you should be looking at alternate investments in bullion by alternate investments. I mean, ETFs, sovereign gold bonds and uh, 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 whether uh, physical gold has any physical gold and silver for that matter has any substantial advantage over electronic formats of gold. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down and watch what I have to share with you. If you like what you see, I only have one request. Our work is free, will remain free, but I would appreciate it if you can help me reach a wider audience by sharing my video with your family, your friends, your social media contacts, etc. So friends, first of all, where not to buy your gold from? Because that's important. Buying gold from your bank is counterproductive. A lot of you might get surprised. Hey, Vijay, banks are safe and uh, we get peace of mind if we buy our gold from banks. Very true. But there's a problem here. Number one, banks, when they sell gold, they have their embossing, they have their logo, etc. stamped onto the gold. And the banks, as per the RBI Act, have a license to sell you gold. They can't buy it back from you. And banks have heavier overhead costs, which is why their gold and silver is a little more and a lot more expensive rather as compared to your friendly neighborhood Zaveri Bazaar uh, uh, gold seller or uh, uh, wholesaler. The other thing is I have checked up with MMTC, Minerals and Metals uh, Trading Corporation of India. They have their own gold with the brand of MMTC PAMP huge premium, huge premium over uh, uh, the prevalent market price. So I don't think that would be uh, in your interest to buy gold from these institutional players. The other thing is, even if you tell me that, hey Vijay, I don't mind paying a premium. I don't mind if the banks does not buy back, banks do not buy back their gold. I'll go out there in Zaveri Bazaar and sell this gold. Here comes the problem. When the bank has these coins nuggets, bars, etc. stamped, hologrammed and hallmarked with their insignia, their logo. Whoever you go and sell this gold to will tell you, I will deduct making charges because I will melt it down and then I'm going to make it into an unmarked uh, 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 bar, coin, nugget, etc. So you lose out on melting charges and there will always be a little bit of wastage in purity. So buying from banks, buying from MMTC, PAMP, etc. Not advisable. Now, should you buy in electronic format because buying gold, especially silver is cumbersome. You can keep uh, 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 six, seven, eight million worth of gold in your trouser pocket because the bar will be small. In Western India, in Gujarati uh, 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 dominated uh, markets, a bar of gold equivalent to a kilogram is called Cadbury because it represents a Cadbury. It, it resembles a Cadbury chocolate with a, a, a golden foil on it. So a Cadbury uh, bar of one kilo approximately, you can slip in your trouser pocket and walk around in it. But silver is a whole lot more cumbersome to a, a kind of store. So a lot of people would prefer electronic format of gold and silver. Yes, even silver is available in electronic format. You have silver ETFs, exchange traded funds. In gold, you have sovereign gold bonds. Now, 
What do uh, uh, savvy investors in bullion prefer? They prefer physical. Now, let me share the reason why. Since you know me as a 360 degree uh, worldview kind of a trader who believes in behavioral finance, the logic behind uh, 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 the motive and the move is always important. Number one, ETFs trade at a discount to physical gold. If ETFs are traded in denomination of one gram each, you will see that that gram of gold is cheaper than one gram of gold being traded in uh, uh, the commodity exchanges. Why is that? Now, I'll tell you why. You see, uh, ETFs are backed by physical delivery of uh, the underlying asset. That is the uh, 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 philosophy behind the ETF. So when you store gold, there's going to be storage cost. Number two, not your entire float is in the uh, physical delivery of gold and silver. Some amount of money is always kept for hedging. Why hedging? Because prices tend to swing violently in commodities, especially at data uh, declaration time. So if the Fed is meeting for interest rate decisions, etc., you will see everything goes haywire. Hey, the fund manager, I don't blame him, might want to hedge a little. Now the market feels that no fund manager can get his hedges right all the time. There will be some trading losses or hedging losses rather once in a while, which is why your ETFs trade at a discount to spot. So maybe the spot appreciates a little more. The ETF also appreciates, but the spot appreciates this much. The ETF, ETF appreciates this much. Same with a sovereign gold bond. You will find sovereign gold bonds giving you a marginal, a very slight tinge of a discount to spot. Number two, and this is the underlying reason that blew my mind. I was sitting with a friend of mine who happens to be a member of the Mumbai uh, uh, Bombay Bullion Merchants Association. And uh, we decided to meet uh, with our better halves at my club for dinner. Now I knew, uh, uh, that he was biased towards physical gold because he is a, a wholesaler. But nevertheless, me being me, I decided to needle him and uh, 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 dig out his mind. And I asked him, hey, what do you think is better, paper gold or uh, physical gold? This guy said, look, I know what you're doing. You're deliberately trying to make me commit as to what is good, but I'll give you a damn good reason as to why physical gold beats paper gold said, why are you buying gold? I said, because I want to hedge. I want to do asset allocation, keep some money out of paper assets so that it is there. Some amount of my money is there in tangible hard assets. And if you've seen my earlier video, I have a pretty standard game plan, which I advise people. You can please feel free to disagree. It's your choice. I would say anything less than 20% allocation of your wealth to bullion is being underinvested in bullion, especially in times now that we are on a very long, long term path to inflation. We, the world has pumped and uh, printed so much of unbacked currency that no matter how much you try to convince me that inflation is transitional. Hey, I'm a little rigid out here about uh, that idea. I think inflation is not transitional. Let 2024 go. I'm talking of calendar year, not Indian financial year. You will have 50 to 60 countries where uh, elections are being held. The biggest one of them being uh, the USA. You will see that all the gravy covering and all the warts, moles, pimples and scars that have been covered by artificial makeup on, in, in the economic data of all these countries will get washed out and the, the blemishes will come out in the open. What are you going to do then? So he said, if you're basically investing in bullion because you want to segregate some money out of paper assets, does it really make sense that you invest gold in paper form itself? Yeah, that idea kind of sold me out. So it makes sense. Am I against ETFs? Hey, no. As a matter of fact, I do have some ETFs. It makes sense. So it's a mix. You might want to buy some physical, you might want to buy some ETFs, you might even want to buy some sovereign gold bonds because, hey, it's giving you an interest along with capital appreciation. 
So it all boils down to your personal preferences actually. All right. Now, assuming that you want to buy physical gold and or silver, how do you go about it? How do you buy it at reasonable cost? Of course, you can't get it at a discount. If somebody was to tell me, in spite of me being uh, 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 having an office in Zaveri Bazaar for uh, many, many decades, I would tr not trust anyone at all who would come out and tell me, Vijay, I'm giving you a discount on gold. Come on, buy it. I'm giving you a 2%, 3% or 10% discount. I would run the other way. I think that gold might not be of the good, uh, uh, pure quality that you'd want. There must be something wrong. Why is he giving it to me at a discount? I wouldn't trust him. But if not at a discount, at least at a reasonable price compared to the other guys. So number one, go to Zaveri Bazaar. What is a Zaveri Bazaar? Zaveri Bazaar in uh, uh, Hindustani or English is a market where jewelers uh, uh, kind of carry out their business. Of course, there might be other establishments, other businesses as well. But the area is predominantly of dwellers. Zaveri bazaars in India are in every city, every town. So you can't say, I don't know where Zaveri bazaar is in my location. Hey, find out. Ask somebody. Even your maidservant or uh, your domestic help will know. So uh, uh, let's not even get there. Go there. Take some time out. Maybe get your shoes dirty and go and uh, uh, smell the... Uh, 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 smell the uh, sights, the, 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 the aromas and uh, the food stalls and uh, the guys who are uh, uh, electronic uh, testers of gold. I'll, I'll follow you. I'll, I'll, I'll lead you through these steps. So go to Zaveri Bazaar, nose around, smell around, look around, but do not buy. Don't go to a jewelry store with, uh, who's selling retail gold and silver. Of course, he'll sell you bars, coins, uh, 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 uneven shaped uh, rods or whatever that you want, but they will always have a profit markup built into the price. Who do you buy from? Buy from somebody who has his own refinery and a smelter. In uh, Western India, in uh, Hindi and Gujarati, it is called Bhatti. Bhatti would mean a kiln, a furnace. Somebody who is a government licensed refiner, wholesale refiner, who imports gold and silver from the customs officially, melts it into his own furnace, brands it with his own logo and stamp and sells it. This guy will give you the cheapest price. Not at a discount, of course, he's not going to do you a favor, but his price will be much more honest as compared to your retail jeweler. Now, what kind of gold and what kind of silver should you buy? The one thing veterans, those who know their gold and silver will tell you, never buy machine cut 100% even round number denominated bars, coins or uh, 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 rods and nuggets. Why? The fact that uh, a Cadbury, like I told you, a gold uh, uh, a biscuit or a gold bar uh, is called Cadbury because it resembles a bar of Cadbury chocolate wrapped in golden foil. The, the, the fact that Cadbury is more expensive than the other uneven uh, in Gujarati, it is called Lagdi, resembles the word Lakdi. It is machine cut, it is weighed, it is cut evenly, there is labor cost involved, whereas an uneven bar need not be exactly 1000 grams, 500 grams, 250 grams or whatever. It will be uneven and of a, a, a very odd denomination. It will not look a very pleasant or an attractive sight. How does it look? Let me show you. This is an uneven bar of silver. It doesn't shine as much as you think it should have because uh, it's uh, collected a little bit of oxidization. As you can see here. Now, this is 916.90 grams. It is not 1000 grams. It is not a kilo. Why is this uneven? Because I didn't want to pay a premium for a 1000 gram bar. What is the difference? Hey, it can be close to a 1000 rupees a kilo. And when you sell a machine cut bar, the guy is going to charge you melting charges, whatnot, etc, etc. 
And of course, that's his way of making a little more money from you. And you're going to get 1000 bucks less anyway. So why pay a premium when it is your dweller who's going to have a party at your expense by uneven bars? Now, are they safe? Just because they're uneven, just because they're not exactly 100% uh, 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 round numbers. Yes, they are. I don't know whether the camera is catching uh, the logo and uh, the hallmarking stamp on this bar, but it is. It is hallmarked, it is stamped with the uh, seller's smelter's name. All right. Do I take it at face value? No matter how friendly I am with uh, a, a guy who I go out in the night with his wife, me and uh, my wife go out with him and his wife. We have a good time. We have dinner. We, we talk and uh, joke around in the morning when I go out there and buy gold or silver with him. Do I trust him blindly? No, not at all. So what do I do? In spite of the stamping, in spite of the hallmarking, I go and get it checked. How? In the good old days, there was a rub test. They had a black or a brown color uh, kind of a, a, a stone, right? They would uh, basically take your gold and silver and rub it. Now, why would they rub it? Because there would be metal filings on that brown or black stone. Now, from that filing, after wearing a magnifying glass on the eye, uh, experienced jeweler would be able to tell you whether it is 18 carat, 20 carat, 22 carat or 24 carat. Basically the purity, which worked very, very well. And they were fairly accurate because of experience. But what happens nowadays is that crooks have got a whole lot more savvier. Allow me to explain. This is approximately a kilo of silver. I get it rubbed and it comes out to be 999.5. 50%. Silver does not come in 99.99. Uh, uh, .99. It would become too brittle. So it is at best 999.5% pure. So I'll get it rubbed. The guy with a magnifying glass will look at the stone and tell me, okay, you can go ahead. Uh, it's 999.50. But what has he tested? He's tested only the surface. Nowadays, there have been instances where the center, the core of the coin is either a stone or it is lead because lead is heavy. It could be copper, it could be brass, it could be iron ore, anything, anything but silver, anything but gold. What are you going to do about it? Hey, you have been cheated. It's hallmarked, it's stamped. So what do you do? Spend a amount, a small amount equivalent of a sandwich that you eat at a roadside vendor. Go to a guy in every Zaveri Bazaar, there are these guys because wherever there's a goldsmith, wherever there's a Battiwala, wherever there's a smelter or a refiner, there will always be a Tanchwala. This is a Western India parlance. Tanchwala is somebody who has an electronic machine who tests your gold, your any kind of uh, 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 precious metal, whether it's an ornament form, it's a biscuit, lagdi, nugget, a bar, etc. They basically test it on electronic machines. It tests it to the core. So whether uh, 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 the core of the, uh, uh, the biscuit, the bar, the nugget that you're buying is honest to you and 100% pure, you will come to know in approximately 50 to 100 rupees per piece. Now, a, a lot of people have argued with me, Vijay, if you're so friendly to this guy, why do you need to step out of his shop and go out there and spend 50 rupees or 100 rupees uh, uh, per piece to get it electronically tested? My logic is very simple. I'm 58 year old. You see my gray hair. I want to sleep easy in the night. I would rather spend this 50 to 70 rupees and buy peace of mind than keep wondering whether what I've got is a piece of stone covered with a precious metal or is it really precious, precious metal? There's an old movie uh, uh, called Lock Up starring Sylvester Stallone. Now, uh, he's of course the hero. The, the other guys ask him, hey, what's your secret to survival in a lockup, in a jail? He says DTA. He said, what's DTA? He said, don't trust anybody. So in the bullion business, you can be friends with everybody, but you don't trust anybody. You always, always and always get it checked and collect the receipt for the money that you have given him, the Tanchwala, for checking your gold and or silver. 
Believe me, it won't cost you more than a sandwich at a roadside stop. This is how you buy bullion with peace of mind. This is how you buy it at a reasonable cost because you're buying it from a refiner and a smelter, a wholesaler, not a retail store. Do not buy from a bank, please. And hey, if you want to buy ETFs and uh, 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 sovereign gold bonds, go ahead and do it. Try to have a product mix, some in physical, some in uh, ETF, some in SGBs. All right. But like my friend told me, the fact that you want to diversify your amount away from paper and then buy gold again in paper format, does it really make sense? It's a question of personal attitudes, aptitudes and risk appetites and preferences, really. I hope this video added value to you and you liked what you saw. If you did, sharing this video with your friends would go a long way in spreading my kind of work that I do in uh, the markets, a 360 degree worldview across asset classes, currencies, commodities, equities, derivatives, and I'm a systems based trader who's been trading these markets since 1986. Friends, before I bid goodbye to you in this video, a reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being uh, uploaded here. In the comment segment, I would love to hear from you as to how my videos help you become better traders and what you would want me to record in my next videos to help you even better. And of course, do share my videos without fail. Thank you for being with me in this video till we meet again in my next video. This is Vijay Bambwani signing off for now. Have a very profitable day ahead. Bye-bye.